very interesting more interesting actually i personally find these ideas more interesting than the ideas of functionalists and marxists marxists uh, i don't think that there is anyone in the class who has never heard the name of karl marx and who has never come across terms like class class conflict socialism false consciousness and revolutionary consciousness i will explain them uh, gradually but now i want to concentrate more on these two things which are seemingly interconnected but slightly different there is a difference of stress emphasis one is uh, ethno methodology one of the latest perspectives now in uh, ethno methodology uh, in 1967 harold h a r o l d harold garfinkel g a r f i n k e l harold garfinkel an american sociologist produced a book studies in ethno methodology his aim was to understand the methodologies that scientists including social scientists use and what he find that uh, actually the uh, one central concept of sociology has been order society order regularity pattern institutions garfinkel is not interested in order because garfinkel thinks that order does not exist the world is chaotic there is no order then how do we perceive an order in society for garfinkel this is uh, the most important or most interesting question is it possible that all of us perceive existence of an order in society while actually there is no order to uh, explain what he he has in mind let me give example of one counseling experiment it's a long story but in short he did a counseling experiment among students he told his student that a great counselor is coming and you can discuss all kinds of problems of yours problems of education problems of money problems of conflict with parents family anybody problem with girlfriend anything all kinds of problems you can discuss with your counselor and counselor will sit in another room you will sit in another room the connection will be made through intercom and there is only one condition that you will put your question in a manner which can be asked uh, you will put your question in a manner which can be answered in yes and no you will frame your question in such a manner that your counselor will say either yes or no theek hai so students were sitting in one one room and counselor in the other room they were connected through intercom the students were asking they were framing their question putting their questions uh, in their own manner and counselor was saying yes or no all kinds of questions the students asked all kinds of questions and uh, the counselor answered them in yes and no and it was found that most of the students were satisfied with the rest with the answers of the counselor somebody may come and say okay will you that i do not like my studies if i like painting then should i not quit my engineering education and go for painting and the counselor may say yes or no yes yes will mean that yes 
you leave engineering and go for painting no will mean that no you continue your engineering subjects and forget about painting then if the counselor says yes okay you go for painting then there may be another question and again the answer will be yes and yes or no all the students were satisfied the uh, actually there was no counselor and yes and no answer answers were arranged in a random fashion completely random yes yeses and noes were arranged in completely random manner so the, then the issue is that actually when there is no order and you can check the, you can yourself do this kind of experiment actually there is no order yes and no yes no yes no 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 yes they were arranged in random manner but students were satisfied irrespective of the kind of question they asked students seem to be satisfied why did this happen you can ask to yourself why did this why should such a thing happen uh, garfinkel's answer was that our understanding of anything is interpretive kind and uh, the manner in which a social scientist or a scientist works from the manner in which men in the street work there is a lot of taken for granted as in case of interactions communication among street men there is lot of taken for granted in sciences also likewise in construction of order equilibrium this or that there is lot of taken for granted without taken for granted communication is not possible if i ask you how are you invariably you will say i am fine thank you how are you actually you may be running fever and still you will say i am fine you may be suffering from monetary losses and still you say i am fine thank you you may have an f grade and still you will say i am fine thank you because these are the expect taken for granted this is taken for granted this is part of our etiquette that how are when i meet you how are you this is part of taken for granted that i will ask you how are you actually i i may not be worried at i may not be concerned about your welfare at all go to hell <laughs> you may be happy or you may be unhappy you may be fine or you may not be fine i am least bothered and still i ask how are you and you say you may be fine you may not be fine and still you say i am fine thank you how are you suppose i want to adopt a more scientific attitude towards this and somebody ask me how are you and i ask with respect to what <laughs> I, with respect to what is it about my stomach or my brain or about my financial condition or about my grades or my relationship with my brother or my roommate or about uh, the conflicts i had with some friends on the playground yesterday if somebody says like this then you will say is mad pagal ho gaya actually most of our explanations and theories are also like that taken for granted if in high school a teacher says that there are these laws of motion one of them is v equal to u plus at then a student has a right to ask what is v v is the velocity after time t what is u u is initial velocity a a is acceleration t is time okay what is acceleration somebody can legitimately ask what is acceleration and the teacher say that acceleration is the change in speed 
what is change in the speed and the teacher says that speed at two points of time may not be same it may be different what is the speed the speed is distance divided by time distance covered divided by time what is distance suppose somebody have what is distance at you know, at some stage questions and answers become absurd meaningless and at some stage without asking further you become satisfied because it is taken for granted in science is also same thing happen taken for granted actually there is no order rules laws underlying laws now why in some context in some societies at some points of time how things taken for granted become taken for granted that's a different story but there is lot of role of taken for granted so when somebody asks us how are you we do not question him back we do not say with respect to what if you say with respect to what then you will say I, i was just trying to be polite i am least worried about how you are <laughs> go to hell taken for granted similarly if you ask a sociology teacher what is functionalism we will say that functionalism is about equilibrium what is equilibrium equilibrium means uh, that the relationships between two things are fixed what is fixed something we does not change so, so often and so easily what is change at some stage uh, your question become meaningless and teacher cannot answer there is lot of taken for granted the term ethno methodology itself has been derived from ethno botany ethno ethnography means uh, things which belong to a specific cultural groups so in science also there is a kind of ethno methodology you see what is trying to say that you are trying to discover reality unearth reality understand you are trying to unearth reality according to garfinkel there is no reality because to unearth reality you always fall back on some pattern which is taken for granted somebody says that uh i did a marvelous study of fertility and i found that the average number of children in india is this standard deviation is this skewness is this kurtos is this behind making such statements i am already assuming that the fertility follows a normal distribution there cannot be any study there cannot be any unearthing of reality any discovery which is not based on taken for granted garfinkel and uh, that is the meaning of reflexivity that you are looking for data but for analyzing your data you always fall back upon a theory you claim that you are going to make a theory but in arriving at a theory you are already making use of a theory that is reflexible you can you are never you are you are never producing any new theory any new law because in discovery of laws your discoveries are rooted in taken for grantedness of certain patterns and laws 
of society or your academic community. Now, if you apply this concept to social order, it means that what you call order actually is all perceived. Under certain conditions, uh, you construct certain images of an order. It's your construction. And that means the order or the ideas of order are as much dependent on what is ordered as on those people who are constructing the order. So, it's no methodology. Indexicality means that meanings are rooted in the discourse or the language. Because you cannot explain meaning of anything without referring to language. To explain meaning of one word, you refer to other words. And the meanings of the words to which you refer are part of a socio-cultural system, taken for granted. You know, this explains why students in the ethnomethodological experiment of Garfinkel found their interaction with the hypothetical counselor quite meaningful and useful. Because yes and no of the counselor, both yes and no were interpreted in the light of what our students already had in their mind taken for granted. So, counselor says, yes, you leave engineering and you start painting. Maybe our student has seen the three idiots and interpreted that yes in that manner. And if the counselor said, no, you should not, maybe our student was under the influence of his parents. पहले बीटेक कर लो कुछ खा कमा लो पेंटिंग वेंटिंग बाद में कर ले तो व्हाट एंड देन यू आल्सो एसोसिएट सम अमाउंट ऑफ मैच्योरिटी क्रेडिबिलिटी ट्रस्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सपर्टीज ऑफ द काउंसलर यू आई हैव सीन दैट वी से समथिंग टू आवर चिल्ड्रन एंड दे डू नॉट एक्सेप्ट एंड व्हेन दे फाइंड द सेम थिंग from their friends or TV, TV channels, then they accept. Because they do not trust their parents, children do not trust their parents. So, uh, children will trust their friends more, their peers. So, there are so many, th in construction of meaning, there are so many things. If I use the word round and you, and you want to know what is the meaning of the term round. Independent of the context in which the term round is used, you cannot understand the meaning of round. If you want to ch consult dictionary, you will find 80 meanings of the word round. But what is exactly the meaning of the term round when I utter this sound, you know, when I utter this word round, depends on taken for grantedness of discourse in a given socio-cultural context. In introductory course in sociology, we will not be able to go very deep into these things. But what I want to say that Garfinkel questions the very existence of any kind of order in society. And for him, understanding of how we construct an order in our mind is more important than the order. And in this respect, we are no different from 
men in the streets. Even social scientists or scientists are no different from those in the street. Lot of things taken for granted. So indexicality means that the meanings, meanings of things, words, things, ideas, relationships, abstractions are rooted in a given socio-cultural context which and in those ideas which are taken for granted. Meaning of one idea is derived from uh, other ideas which are taken for granted. Actually, this is the, uh, this is the reason why our communication often fails. Communication between friends, between two generations, between two religious communities. If I say that God is only an idea and that shows that God does not exist, that God is only an idea. God is only an, like any other idea, it's, an, it's a human product, it's a product of human mind at certain stage of evolution. A certain idea of God develops. And suppose I am ta uh, talking to a devoted Hindu or a devoted Muslim. I may think that I am making a great statement and I may think that uh, I am making a true statement. And like anything else, like the ideas of beauty, morality, law, God is also an idea and the idea change. I may behave like a Marxist, I may be a Marxist. That our ideas are associated with uh, the patterns of relationships in society between the powerful classes and powerless classes. But my friend who is a devoted Hindu or a devoted Muslim will never appreciate my idea. We quarrel, we express our differences. For my Muslim friend, this very idea that God is only a human imagination is very sinful. And I do not have a good future after my death. On the day of judgment, I will be sent to hell. To go to heaven on the day of judgment, you have to believe that uh, there is an al almighty God, Allah. You have, or my Vedantin friend will not understand me at all. He will say, Ki, Pagal ho gaya. Brahm is the real reality and all other things which, which are other than Brahman are illusory. They, he, why do our communications fail? Because they are taken for granted. There is so much of taken for granted in our mind that we do not understand each other. We can communicate with each other only when the content of taken for granted is same for all the parties. So a conservative Muslim can smoothly talk to another conservative Muslim and a conservative Hindu can easily communicate with a conservative Hindu. But when a conservative Hindu is talking to a Marxist, they will not understand each other and at some point communication will fail. So the issue of what is right, whether God exists or does not exist. To Garfinkel, this is a useless question. The real question is that how do some people have one meaning of God and other people have other meanings of God? How are these meanings created in the process of social interaction? All our meanings, all our interpretations of things are rooted in other taken for granted ideas or our culture, social setting, socio-cultural milieu, our economic understanding, economic thinking. 
And reflexivity means when we try to develop a law, actually our, uh, our innovations, our discoveries are all rooted in our axioms, assumptions, postulates, although not exactly the same, but when Kuhn said in his Structure of Scientific Revolution in 1972, that science does not show any linear growth in knowledge, accumulative, cumulative growth of knowledge. Rather, knowledge develops in different paradigms of perspectives. He was also making a similar kind of statement. So this is ethnomethyl. Now I must also say something about symbolic interactionism, something very similar. Ethnomethodology and symbolic interactionism will have many things similar. The most important proponents of symbolic interactionism are George Herbert Mead and Herbert Bloomer. Herbert Bloomer's question is how reactions of others shape something. Deviance, primary deviance, secondary deviance. When an act which is commonly performed by many people is noticed and labeled as deviant by some powerful people, some agencies of social control, maybe administrators, maybe police, maybe parents, maybe wardens, executives, it becomes primary deviance. But after a person has been labeled as a deviant, reactions of others what are reactions of others? Herbert Bloomer is more interested in that deviance, secondary deviance, that deviance, which has been caused not by individuals' own reasons, but because of reactions of others. Somebody is falsely implicated in some criminal act and he spends five years in jail. There have been cases in which people have been executed, they have been given capital punishment, and years later it was found that actually the whole proceeding against them was false. Falsity is always a possibility. In all criminal proceedings, falsi falsity or a possibility of falsity cannot be ignored. But suppose somebody has spent five years in jail and he was actually falsely implicated in something. He comes out. Nobody will give him a job because he has been labeled. A label of a criminal has been attached to him. Secondary deviation. Now, when the person does not get a suitable employment after coming out of the prison, maybe for his survival, he will have no option other than joining a group of deviants. He has to survive. So, he may join a group of thugs, thieves, robbers, or people indulging in criminal, petty criminal activities. He has to survive. These people are more interested in how reactions of others create a situation even uh, something like pain. You can never separate the real pain of anything, a physical ailment, illness, disease, sickness, a legion or a psychological problem, a crisis situation, pain of some crisis from 
the pain which is created by reactions of others. See, imagine that somebody's husband dies, a, a young girl of age 25, 24, and her husband dies in a road accident or kuch bhi, maybe heart attack. Now she suffers from pain, anguish, psychological, why me only, tremendous pain. But is the pain uh, dependent totally on the fact that her husband has died? Or the pain is also depend, dependent on how the reactions of others are. Will the pain of a young uh, woman who has lost her husband at the age of 24-25 be same in America, in India, and in India in Delhi, in a tribal society? pain of such a woman in modern society and in traditional primitive society the same. A symbolic interaction is, will say, like phenomenologist, theorist of knowledge, that actually this is uh, socially constructed. In a society, in, there is always a pain that you lose uh, your friend, your husband, your brother, your parents, you lose. There is a pain. It's a painful thing. There is a loss. Your emotions are attached. But in a condition like India, when women from neighborhood will come and say, Are, you are completely ruined. What will happen to your life now? You are left alone. There is no meaning in life. What will you do? Your whole family is destroyed. Tumare to maabhaab bhi mar gaye. अब इतनी बड़ी चीज तुम्हारे साथ हो गई। You don't know what kind of pain you are inflicting on the person. I remember a friend of mine. He was, I think, a lab assistant in chemistry. A very social person, very good person. And his daughter had committed suicide. I will never forget that thing. So as soon as I, I came to know about it, I went to him. I did not know how to, how will I establish communication with him at that time when his daughter had committed suicide. He was such a courageous person and very mature person. When he saw me, he, he on his own he started talking. He said, Sharma ji, Himmat dijiye, roye mat, himmat dijiye. Yeah. Do you understand what I want to say? That anything that we have in our mind is actually the product of social interaction. And it's very difficult for us to separate the real content of something from the effect of uh, reactions of others. This is what symbolic interaction is saying. Whether it is deviance, whether it is pain, whether it is our self-image, good or bad, uh, functional or dysfunctional, it's heavily dependent on reactions of others. So George Herbert Mead was one of those people, first time he said that things of this world are like symbols. And uh, symbols uh, not only tell us what they are, but also suggest a line of action. When we say that this is a chair, chair is a symbol. Chair may be wooden chair, cane chair, steel chair. What is chair? So chair does not depend on uh, the material of which this is built. But chair is a symbol which suggests a line of action. Uh, functional sociologists are more concerned with role. 
and assume that there is a social structure in society, positions, role, and they are quite objective. But they say that they provide only broad guidelines. Actually, in all relationships, there is a scope for maneuvering, negotiations, mutual adjustment, and interpretation. For structuralists, husband and wife, father and son, are sets of roles, teacher and student. And uh, positivists or empiricists or functionalists focus on the relationships between these diets, father, son, husband, wife, teacher, student. Symbolic interactionists will say that actually it provide uh, it uh, the role of husband father or teacher may only provide a broad guideline a line of action but actually what kind of relationship will exist will depend on lot of maneuvering negotiations mutual adjustments interpretations And all roles and relationships are negotiated. To, uh, to prove their point, they will say that all teachers are not same, all students are not same, all husband, we talk of uh, nuclear family, joint family and roles and relationships. But relationship between husband and wife is not same for all husbands and all wives. So what is the difference? The difference lies in uh, social interactions. Meanings, meanings of the roles, meaning of the role of father, meaning of the role of son, meaning of the role of teacher, student, husband and wife. These are meanings and meanings depend on lot of things. Meanings depend on your biological, biographical situation your age, your social identity, your education, your gender, your community, many things. Meanings are not fixed. Meanings are negotiated. So meaning of everything then is uh, inseparable from social interaction. So for symbolic interaction is, first thing is social interaction and from interactions develop the concept of self and uh, through self fulfilling prophecy Action. Social interaction, self, self fulfilling prophecy, and action. So, in order to understand somebody's action, you have to understand his concept of self. They make a distinction between self and identity. Or I and me. Identity is uh, the other's understanding of me. For my self-image, I depend on how others understand me. Actually, myself, myself is nothing but my image that, that I find about me in reading of others' reactions towards me. So this uh, others uh, society, means society becomes a looking glass self for me looking glass 
self is a looking glass self for me. And another term for the same thing is generalized other. Generalized other stands for society. There have been a lot of studies in psychology of health, of pain, of affliction, risk, coping behavior, coping strategies, in case of different diseases, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, HIV, which show that the understanding of severity or the understanding of pain is not a simple function of biological factors. It's social. Pain is always a social. Three shorts of pain can vary from person to person. One person can bear more pain than others. Or a person can be stoic, ascetic, or a person can more easily weep uh, when he or she suffers from pain. Threshold may be less. This symbolic interactionism uh, gives more importance to social interaction. In uh, you know, the major difference between functionalism or Marxism and symbolic interactionism will be that to look at social reality in a more objective scientific manner and to divide reality into roles, relationships, correlations, facts, patterns, values, uh, and to create regression coefficients and measurements and indicators, that is to follow one kind of approach. In this approach, uh, interactionists want to go deeper into the meanings that people attach to their action, that without understanding their meanings, you cannot understand their action. And uh, meanings are not fixed. They are part of biographical situation. As you, as you age, as your interactions change, you become more mature. We say we be, you become more mature. But the thing, thing is that your meanings change. Your understanding of education today is not same as your understanding of education was when you were in a primary school. Your relationship with or your understanding of God today is not same as it was when you used to visit a temple along with your mother. And it will not remain same. As you will mature after 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, your images of religion will change. And what will happen to your images of religion will depend more on with what kind of people you are interacting, in what circumstances you are, what are your life circumstances. You live happily or uh, you, you suffer. Uh, I, although I cannot say that I am a follower of Acharya Rajneesh, but I remember one statement that he once made, that those people who are happy, successful, affluent, who are contented, who are satisfied with life, everything that they wanted to have in life, they have got. They will become thieves because these people want to thank someone. I like this Acharya Rajni say that those people who have achieved everything in life, they want to thank somebody and they become thieves. They believe in God. And people who suffer, who are in misery, who have lost everything in their life. Maybe somebody's son died, somebody's husband died, somebody lost his property in a legal battle, or maybe somebody developed uh, a, a terminal disease like cancer or HIV or uh, uh, stroke. They become atheist. Nastik, wo nastik banjate. Whether nastik or atheist, whether Acharya Rajneesh is right or not, but I am giving this example 
to convey the point made by symbolic interaction is that our meanings are heavily dependent on our experiences and interactions with others. You are, so in one situation when you are happy, your interactions are fulfilling and you got everything in this life, in this world, in society, whatever society expects you to have in life, you have them. So you want to thank somebody and you become a theist and when you have lost everything, you become an atheist. So our images, our understandings of self, I, uh, you say it very easily. No, no, I think like this. I, and when you say I think like this, yeah, I, firm, I firmly believe in this. I, I have no second opinion in my mind. You think that you are propounding some absolute truths, but actually your thinking is nothing but a reflection of your interactions with others. Outside your interactions with others, there is nothing. There is nothing concrete outside interactions, empty. Abstracted from social interactions, our meanings are empty. Our meanings are meaningful only in a given socio-cultural milieu, in a given context of interaction. That's why it is called symbolic interactionism. Interaction is interaction with others. And all the images, meanings, things which we have in mind, desires, expectations, standards of evaluation, values, what is good, what is bad, what is ugly, what is beautiful, that is all the result of social interaction. In some situations, people may feel that uh, to be beautiful may be to be fair. Eh? In our country, where you have both, both all types, um, black, fair, wheat is all kinds of people. In our country now, we think that to be beautiful is to be fair. And women spend a lot of money on creams which promise to make them fair. But is this also the case in Africa where everybody is black? Is there no concept of beauty in African? Africans also have a concept of beauty. So, everything, uh, our uh, uh, concepts of beauty, our concepts of truth and falsehood, beauty, ugly, good, bad, moral, immoral, right, wrong, they are all dependent on social interaction. In this respect, social interaction is also have one point in common with Marxists, that our consciousness is determined by our social relations. If you reduce all relations to economic relations, you become a Marxist. And if you do not re re reduce all relations to economic relations, and you take into consideration all types of relations, then you are a symbolic interaction. So images, uh, all kinds of meanings and images are dependent on social interaction. Now this is uh, symbolic interactionism has been of great importance in examining secondary deviance. It's a I think you will agree with me that it's a very humanistic philosophy because it does not lay blame for deviance on any single person. It says that deviance is a product of social interactions. Whether it is deviance of money or anything, moral character, any kind of deviance, that is a product of social interactions. So, if we have to take any remedial measure, you know, most of the time in our society when we talk of remedial measures, we focus on the person who has deviated from the norms of society. While symbolic interactionists will say that remedial measures means 
remaining uh, all the conditions in which the person lives. Remedial measures cannot be confined to one person alone. This morning when I was watching TV, this idea of symbolic interactionism and deviance and these things was going on in my mind. And they were showing something of Ganga Bachao Andolan. And I felt that uh, people are spending their life in jail for petty crimes. Most of those who are, if you visit a jail and if you conduct a survey of inmates of jails, you will find that 70-80% of all the inmates have been jailed for petty crimes. 10 rupees, 20 rupees, some conflict, conflict over land, or with their neighbor, quite often with their cousins or brothers. And those who are harming society so much, you know, by polluting rivers, by hiding their income from income tax, by taking bribe, by companies coming together and fixing prices, white collar crimes. They are all living life of a normal person, clean, normal, honorable, powerful and moral and, yeah, and maybe quite often uh, the life of a virtuous person. So, you are going to be responsible for ruining the life of thousands and lakhs of people. You are responsible for ruining the life of thousands and lakhs of people. And permanently, for years. And still, you are considered to be a virtuous man because you have given money. By earning money from your tenuries, you have constructed a temple. And one thing is a street child, 10 rupees of jeb cut, पानी की बोतल में गंदा पानी भर के भेज दिया, पकड़ लिया, तो जेल में चला गया। Symbolic interaction is will not lay blame on particular persons, it will lay blame on social interactions। बाकी डिस्कस करेंगे फिर क्लास।